Whew. Oh, who's this? Who's this? She's done her hair. She hasn't tidied the bed though, so just ignore that. Oh my God, I've actually curled my hair with straighteners for the first time in God knows how long. Not even, I don't even have like having a newborn to blame for that. Just lock down everything. Like I, I've barely done my hair this whole year. Anyway, it's good to be back. Here we go. Also, just a quick um, thank you to everyone that said they were liking my hair long. I am also liking my hair long. I did do this on purpose when I found out I was pregnant because it's just easier to have long hair. I'm really happy with how it's looking. Uh, definitely the pregnancy vitamins, I think, have contributed to this. And I'm just bracing myself for postpartum hair loss, uh, which might happen, it might not, who knows. Anyway, what a difference three weeks makes. The last time I vlogged, I think Gabriel was about seven weeks, he's now 10 weeks and he has just come on leaps and bounds. I was mentioning in my last vlog about um, like digestive issues he was having, like being constipated. Um, also, sorry, I've got a sty, which is what this is. It's getting better because it's not painful or anything now, but just in case you look at my eye and think, what the hell, a sty. Uh, I think this is um, from being so tired. He's doing so much better. Um, I knew that his like digestive issues wouldn't last. It's a very newborn -y type thing. It tends to peak around six weeks. For any new mums or expected mums, you do come out the other side. And I feel like he's so much happier, so much more comfortable. Poo's absolutely no problem. <laughs> so careful what you wish for. Since I spoke to you last, he's had his vaccinations. I don't think we spoke about that, um, which was fine. He did scream when he had them. Um, but then I just comforted him and he was fine. He fell asleep in the buggy on the way home. It was like nothing happened. So he was fine. And I gave him cowpole. He didn't seem to get a fever. He didn't seem particularly fussy. You wouldn't have known that anything had happened. So I think we were just lucky with him because I know that some babies can um, get really affected by it, but he was fine. It was just more the actual jabs happening, which wasn't that nice, but you know, it needed to be done. But we had an eight week checkup. <laughs> And this is the joy of being a boy mum, because the nurse said to me, so they check everything, eyes, uh, heart, like they listen to their heart, everything. Took his nappy off, check his bits. So I'm like, okay, fine. And she's checking them and she goes, right, I'm just gonna check his balls. And firstly I thought, shouldn't you be saying testes if you're a medical professional, but anyway. And I was like, okay, fine. And then she said, have you felt his balls? And I was like, no, no, I haven't. I didn't think I should be, to be honest. It's just a really funny question. So I was like, there we go. This is the joy, the boy mum joy. You get asked questions like, have you touched your son's balls? And in case you're wondering, I still haven't done that. So I, I don't intend to. Um, I don't think it's it's my place to do that. So, <laughs> so weird, isn't it? Okay, so that was fine. But we did have a little bit of a palaver with that because she checked his eyes. She said she couldn't see a red reflect in his eyes, so she referred us to the eye doctor. She didn't really go into detail about what would happen if she, there was no re red reflex, why she was concerned if there was an issue. She just referred me, and it was just a bit weird, because I was like, okay, fine. So I left it. She then rang me the next day and was like, have you heard back from the ref referral? And it seemed urgent that she wanted us to be referred. So then, of course, that she but gave me no more information about what the outcome could be. Oh, if there's no reflect, it could be this, this and this. She was just like, I just want to get a second opinion. Obviously, you have to tell a new mum the reasons as to why you're referring them. Because otherwise, like me, you then Google. What comes up on Google with no red reflex? Eye cancer, obviously. So eye cancer, cataracts, just a load of like quite major eye problems. <laughs> so obviously I'm then like, oh great, <laughs> this is brilliant. Another thing to deal with. <laughs> was in a little bit like in my head about it for a few days because I was like oh my god what if my baby's got eye cancer I also did though come across something that did put my mind at rest because she asked me what his ethnicity was for those that don't know Gabriel is mixed race but again she didn't tell me the relevance of that information um but I did find on google that babies from ethnic minorities often don't have this red reflect so it's like when you take a picture and you get a red flashback in your eyes Generally, apparently, people from ethnic minorities don't have this. But again, that would have been great if she could have told me that, because then I wouldn't have been like, oh my god. So as soon as I saw that, I thought, that must be what it is. Um, and to be honest, I knew his eyes were fine. Hainsey was like, he, we know he can see, we know there's no problem. Um, but it was just a bit, because of the nature of it and her keep ringing me, have you heard from them? I just then thought, well, has she seen something else? You know, it's really awful when you think that something could be really wrong with your baby. So then we go to the hospital, we have our referral. That was 
not a great experience because I had to wait for over an hour for my appointment because I was checked in, but apparently it didn't go off to the nurse, so no one knew I was there. Anyway, we won't get into that. But Gabriel was a little angel, like he was amazing. He just slept, he barely fussed. He just couldn't have been a better boy. So that really helped. But anyway, checked his eyes, all was fine. No cause for concern. But it would just be nice <laughs> to have a month where we don't need to go to hospital. So I'm hoping that November will be that month. Anyway, so that's Gabriel up to speed, where he's at. Um, as I say, so much more comfortable, eating really well, pooping really well, sleeping fine, all is well. And I'm feeling fine too. Uh, so today I need to just run and get a cardboard box because I'm sending back my breast pump, just in the background there, the Medela one. I don't need to pump as much as I was. So I feel like I can just use my pump that I already had um, but this one's been so handy to have but it's a monthly charge so I want to send it back because I don't want to get charged next month because I don't really need it that much. I'm wearing my Beyond 9 linen jumpsuit. Some of you may remember I got this gifted to me while I was pregnant and it is like pregnancy where it's called Beyond 9 so it's nine months but intended to be able to wear Beyond 9 months and you can so I'm just going to show you. Um, it's a linen jumpsuit so a bit, bit summery for now but where's the pocket? As you can see I mean obviously it's oversized but this did house a nine month bump and it now houses a no month Mary. They're really comfortable especially for postpartum where you do feel a little bit baggy around this area. Um, so yeah it's the first time I've worn it since um, being pregnant I think. The face looks quite red as well doesn't it? I don't know if like my skin's got really sensitive after pregnancy again it's the thing that I've heard that can happen but every time I use like an AHA or a glycolic or something I feel like my skin goes red. Um, I think I'm just a bit worn down actually at this point. But anyway, thought I'd get this vlog off to a start. So here we are. And yeah, I probably need to go and relieve Hainsley from Gabriel because he's had him for the last couple of hours whilst I've been showering and sprucing myself. Um, and I think he hasn't eaten. So it's time for me to tag in. Hello. My smiling baby. Oh, you are just so beautiful. God, have we had a day. It's 10 to 4 and it's just gone very, very, very... I don't think you can see, but very gloomy, um, storm-like, in fact. So I'm just making a cup of tea. Let me just set you down. So I spoke to you this morning, didn't I? So I packed up my breast pump and I have dropped it off at a UPS access point because that's what it says to do. But that was a palaver. Hold on, let me just get rid of this tea bag. So I went to the first access point, which is like a two minute walk from the house. So it's quite a big box that it ends up being in, but that's what it got delivered to me in and it got dropped off at an access point. So obviously you assume that it will be fine to drop it back and it tells you to drop it back. So Hainsley carried it and I pushed, gave him the push chair, got to the UPS access point and then we were just sorting things out because I was going to take it into the, into the shop and Hainsley's going to wait outside with Gabriel. And then <laughs> we were um, sorting ourselves out and then this guy just comes out after a few minutes and it's like, oh, our UPS isn't working. But it literally in that way, and I was like, I don't know if I believe him. So I was like, oh, that's annoying because you're literally around the corner. I don't know where the next one is. Googled it. It's like the other side of our town. Um, so I was like, fine, I'll just go there. Rang them, said, is it working? They said yes. So I got an Uber over to there because this box was quite big and then Hainsey came back home again. Walked into this access point and he's like, oh, it's too big. I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, we, we don't really take them when they're that big. And I was like, well, I picked it up from an access point and it told me to drop it back to an access point. It didn't say anything about size restriction. So if that's the case, then you and UPS need to sort that out because I'm just doing what I've been told to do. Oh, you can hear Gabe's getting annoyed. Sorry, Gabe, two minutes. Anyway, so he, like, faffed around. He's like, I need to speak to my man. Oh, look at my elf. I need to speak to my manager. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, turns out we were, oh, honey, hold on. Let's just go over and sit with him. This ear. He's, he's probably lonely. I'm here, my love. Hi. Oh, babe, what's up? Um, so, yeah, so then I was like, well, I'm not going to take this back home in an Uber. And then he was like, okay, we'll take it. But if you'd have come an hour ago, I wouldn't have taken it. I was like, I don't really care. Can you just take it? Anyway, so that's the long and short of that. And I feel really relieved that I've actually dropped that off because um, it was kind of hanging over my head a bit. And now we're just here having a chat. <laughs> okay, we'll have a cuddle. Do you want to finish your milk? 
Maybe? Is that what it is? Good morning. Cup of tea on the go. It's about quarter to eight. I actually think Gabe might have gone back to sleep. <laughs> We've just come in the living room and I've just made him a bottle because he woke up, but he's now having a little snooze. So we'll see if he's awake. So we've been up since 5.30, which is like a normal occurrence. He tends to, he doesn't wake up for the day at 5.30. He wakes up and we'll have a bottle at 5.30 and then he'll go back to sleep. But he did the most disgusting poo <laughs> I've ever witnessed. I feel like I've got like post-traumatic stress from it. <laughs> because it was awful, it was like projectile. Brings me actually to just have a little conversation because I recently changed, should I put you down here? I recently changed the formula that Gabe is on. We were on Aptamil, um, which was fine, but I would prefer to give him something that's got, I don't know, I just think, because formula is just majorly processed, isn't it? So I think that's why a lot of people have a problem with it. But I also found out that formula has palm oil in it, which I had no idea about until, um, someone who I speak to on Instagram, a girl called Katie, um, she also has a baby basically the same age as Gabe and she messaged me after that video and was like, every formula's got palm oil in, um, except this one, so we've switched over. Um, even Hip Organic has got palm oil in. So, she recommended this, which is this brand called Kendamil. Um, and it's made with full cream and it has no palm oil, it's got vegetable oil in it, organic vegetable oil, sunflower, coconut, rapeseed, um, whole milk, whey protein, skim milk. Yeah, the ingredients are just a lot better and it's made in the Lake District. It's just got a really lovely story, I'm such a sucker for branding. Honestly, this is what excites me now, new formula. <laughs> I've been using this and he's taken to it really well. The only thing is his poo since switching. When we were on Aptamil, I'm really sorry about talking about this um, to people that aren't interested in, in baby things, but you know, if you're gonna have a baby, this is the reality of it. I was always like, I can't, I, how am I gonna ever change a dirty nappy? And you just do when it's your own baby, and I've had no problem with it. When he was on Aptamil, his poo was kind of like paste, right? But, and so even when he did big poos, like they do massive poos and it goes all up their back, it gets on their clothes, fine. But when it was a paste, it, I mean, it's n it's not great either way. But anyway, his poos have basically changed to like liquid being on this formula, yeah. which I think is fine. He doesn't seem, I don't think it's like a bad tummy. And to me, I think that's maybe better because I know that breastfed babies have very liquidy poos. So this makes me think that, okay, this milk is closer to breast milk anyway. So this morning, we, um, he does a poo and I get up to change him and he can sometimes still poo when you're changing him. So you take the nappy off, there's a lot in, going on in there and then there's more to come and you don't realise until you're there. This happened this morning, but because it's gone so liquidy, instead of before where it would just kind of come out and go into the nappy, it literally sh shot out, <laughs> went all over me, all over my duvet cover and all over the floor. So, and I've run out of floor, like I have this vanish cleaner for further carpet, which we've run out of obviously, um, because the last time we used it is because my waters broke and I basically half gave birth all over the floor. Not half gave birth, but there was a lot of mess um, on the floor so I had to use it then. Anyway, I'll save all this. This is TMI and it's only eight in the morning anyway. And usually when a poo like that happens, I can call in the troops, i.e. Hainsley. But he was asleep and I felt bad about waking him up because he'd only just gone to bed like two hours before. Here he is. He does this thing with his hand. Like when he sleeps, he's just like, he'll twitch and his hands will go like this. And I just love them. 
So anyway, I'm going to see if he wakes up and has this bloody milk because now I've just made it. That's one thing about formula, the amount of wastage sometimes is really annoying, but you know, such is life. My eye still looks a bit red, but I'm sure you, it feels fine. So I'm in my Beyond Nine jumpsuit once again because it's just the easiest thing to just throw on and it was out already and not covered in poo or milk, was it? We are actually going to go to a baby massage class this morning. Oh, he's yawning, so he's obviously very excited. This is something I've been trying to go to for the last few weeks, but for various reasons haven't made it. Um, but I was determined to go this morning. I've just been wanting to like meet other mums and babies. And, <laughs> and so I feel like we're kind of ready to do a class now. He's 10 weeks. And I feel like from about seven weeks onwards, um, I felt a, like ready to be out with him and that I could, I don't know that he wouldn't have a tantrum or, do you know what I mean? That like, I would be able to know kind of his mood and feel like he would be okay being in a class. So yeah, I feel quite excited about doing that this morning. Don't you, Gabe? I've also joined this app called Peanut, Peanut? Peanut, to meet other mums and babies, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, that sounds like it's an ad, it's not. Um, but yeah, that's been quite nice. Um, it's just a way of, it's like a dating app but to meet other mums, other new mums, and you can, you basically, I'm, I'm telling you about it now, you basically have a profile, like a dating profile, and you can say how old your baby is, you can say your baby's name, um, whether they're a boy or a girl, and a little bit about you, and then pictures, and you just like, message each other, you can set it to your location, so there's a few women that I'm speaking to, and then organising walks, um, so it's really funny, because you definitely have ones where you're like, oh, I think I'll get on with her, or I hope she gets back to me, and then you message and you're like, oh, who's going to ask who for a walk first? So yeah, that's been really nice because I didn't do any mum and baby class. Well, I didn't do any antenatal classes before having Gabe. And I thought it's because I didn't need to. I was like, I've already got friends around here and friends that are mums to various age kids. But it's only after having Gabe and anyone that is currently pregnant that's considering doing like NCT or there's a... Um, a thing called newbies which is similar a way of just meeting new mums I would say to do it because I underestimated how much it would have been nice to have just even if you don't stay in touch with them for a prolonged period of time or you don't necessarily think that you'd be friends with them outside of being a mum it would have just been so nice to have new mums with babies the same age just because you're all going through a similar thing, just to ask questions and, like I say, go for walks with and have little baby friends. So I would advise to do it because I really wish that I had. But that's where, for me, social media has been amazing because I've been able to connect with so many people that have babies a very similar age to Gabriel. So that's really helped, but I definitely feel like I actually want to meet other mums now. It's always quite um, a triumph when you actually make it out on time for something. It's raining, but don't worry because I've got my professional mum coat on. Which a lot of you actually asked me where this was from, and I realised I didn't mention it. It's from Uniqlo, and I actually went back and changed it for the longer one, which I'll show you when we get back home. And I'm really happy I did, but anyway. Also, okay, I'm vlogging in the rain. I'm feeling very sorry for myself because that was a complete waste of time <laughs> because I think there was a mix up and there was one too many people in the class. And because I was doing basically like a free trial of this class, I just then was like, shall I go then? <laughs> and they said, yes. <laughs> so, and I know it's not their fault and I know it's because of the virus, but I definitely have an email saying that I was booked onto this class. And it's just, I really wanted to go today. I don't want to get upset, but I really wanted to go today because I just wanted to like, do something because I've, I've, I've been feeling like quite isolated recently oh god just because I do the same thing every day and we're always at home and I feel like I just I, I'm gonna sound really pathetic and like self-indulgent but I feel like everyone else is really busy with like their lives and I'm just at home I think I've just been feeling a bit low not lonely because I have Hainsley and Honestly, hanging out with Gabriel every day is lovely, but I think I just felt like I, like I just wanted to be with other mums and babies or do something normal. So, I didn't get upset, but I felt like I could have done. I'll get over it, it's fine, but again, I 
guess I just wanted to talk about like all the different feelings that you have as a new mum. I've actually been feeling great the last few weeks and really enjoying it. But then something small can kind of make you feel down and feeling isolated is definitely part of being a new mum, which maybe I'll talk about a bit more. I need to put you away because it is raining and I have actually just got to go to the hair shop. So we'll talk again in a bit. Okay, so I've just vanished the floor. I now need to wait a few hours and hoover that up and I do need to take the duvet cover off and wash that and hope that the stains come out. So yes, I thought I would just um, talk a bit more about what I was just talking about, <laughs> feeling a bit isolated. Um, it's not, I know it's not their fault that they couldn't have more than capacity because it's like against the law and stuff. But you know, it just made me think this is why I don't do mum and baby things. It was just a bit like weird anyway, because it kind of felt like the first day of school. Everyone else like knew each other except me. Everyone else had like their waterproof covers on their buggies and I didn't because I'm not that good at being a mum yet because I don't think of stuff like that. I just had to pack up all my stuff in the middle of this room and just like walk out like a loser. Anyway, and they they were sweet and she said, you know, we've got another class at 10.45 that, you know, is full, but sometimes people don't show up. So I was like, okay, great. And I just left and was like, do you know what? I'm, I'm over this actually. And it's like everyone has been so lovely um, to me on YouTube and Instagram and saying things like, oh, this seems to be coming really naturally to you and you seem really calm and really chilled. And by large, I am, but I just wanted to talk about feeling like isolated and feeling different and like you're in a different space from everyone else. Because as much as I am chilled and I do feel uh, quite comfortable with being a mum and what I'm doing, I do have those days where I feel not like that and I feel upset and I feel down and I feel lonely. <laughs> I wanted to highlight that because I think it's just par for the course. Every new mum feels like that and it's it won't last. If it does last, do talk to someone. By large, it won't last and you will feel better. And like I say, I'm so enjoying being a mum and everything that comes with that, but there are some tough times. Um, which are fleeting, but it doesn't make them any less tough. So just to round off what I was saying about feeling isolated. I mentioned actually when I was pregnant about the feeling of just being a mum. And that's kind of, I guess, what I've been not struggling with, but what has been a challenge at times is knowing that everyone else is doing things i mean i guess it's covid so no one's doing that much but it just seems like everyone else is doing more things than you are and you're just being a mum doing the same thing every day and you know getting projectile pooed on in the morning and getting kicked out of a mum and baby class even friends that are parents they have older kids so they have their life back a bit more so yeah it's just i don't know what i'm trying to say but there's just that aspect of being a new mum that can maybe get you down and yeah I'm just guess I'm trying to say that if you feel like that too then I'm, I'm with you don't let the professional mum cope fool you I am far from a professional mum is basically what I'm saying um but on that note I just want to show you that coat because I changed it hold on I mention where this was from it's from Uniqlo I'll link it down below and it's their seamless down coat because I decided to go for can you see this length? So it goes below the knee, but in between the knee and the ankle, like in between the shin, basically. Um, I did have the one that went just below the bum because I thought this might be a bit too big, but actually I just kept thinking about it and I was like, no, I want a long puffer. And I'm so glad, especially being out this morning, that I did change it for this one um, because you just feel like you're in a massive duvet. And so I can highly recommend it. And as I say, it's from Uniqlo. I have it in a size medium. I'm currently like a size 10 to 12, just for reference, I'm about five foot four. Um, so if you're taller than me, it may not be as long as this, but a lot of you said, oh my God, I've been looking for a coat like that, where's it from? And I, like an idiot, didn't say where it's from. So I'll link it down below, um, but yeah, highly recommend it. It was 159 pounds, so it is a bit of an investment, but I feel like you're gonna want a puffer jacket every winter, so it's not gonna go out of style, is it? Let's be honest. So I'm glad that I finally invested. So there we go. That is probably all I'm gonna vlog today. Are you having a chat, my babes? No, you've been up since 5 a.m. watching Wiki Thompson videos while you saw babies asleep on you. You have, that's what you've been doing. I have no idea where this vlog last left off. I'm just gonna 
start again now and wrap things up i think because i need to get this vlog edited i wanted to get it out today it's sunday but i don't think that's gonna happen oh at the top that's gone wrong again oh no i've just had such a nice morning watching ricky thompson it's just taking me back we got really shit news yesterday about going back into lockdown which is fucking fabulous i haven't watched ricky thompson videos for ages but for some reason it popped up this morning and so i started watching them it just made me really happy but particularly this this one jabberwockies i mean it's the references for me does anyone know what jabberwockies is do you remember america's best dance group he just takes me back he's really nostalgic for me and i just he just takes me back to the simpler times of like late 90s 2000s when everything was just better and like you know trl and like making the video the diary of made and watch watch made fanatic the real world all of those so it just gave me all the nostalgic vibes um then i started watching jabberwockies on youtube and i went just down a hole and then i started watching and then i also watched melissa molinero's wedding dance do you remember her from search for the next pussy cat doll um and then i had a little cry because that video always makes me cry because i just think it's so lovely i just love love i love people in love i love couples in love i love i just love love gabe so it makes me really happy so stuff like that just can make me a bit teary especially if i'm feeling a bit tender in the morning oh we have also just changed his nappy which i now do on the bathroom floor because i honestly have like post-traumatic stress from when he shut all over me the other day um so yeah we need to go and get my bottle now and oh jesus <laughs> Isn't that so scary when you're, he constantly just flings himself off and I'm always worried I'm about to drop him. Or he like headbutts me in the face. Okay, so I've just redone the mum bun. Also, still not looking great. Um, but I quickly just want to show you these trousers that I bought recently from Topshop. Topshop for me, I don't know what it is, but their trousers just fit great. Their jeans are great for me, trousers are great for me. Not every pair. But if I need trousers, I know the exact type of shape that fit me really well on Topshop um, and what size to get. So in terms of ordering online and not having to worry about trying them on, they're always a bit of a, a dead cert for me. So I mentioned, I think in my last vlog, that I was ready to start looking at actual clothes again. Um, I did try on my jeans, my like black straight leg jeans that I wore before pregnancy and they do fit me. They're a wee bit snug but I can definitely wear them. I went on Topshop and I found a pair of trousers and bought them in two colours because I love them so much because they're perfect. And they were £35.99 which I think is a great price for these kind of trousers because if you remember on my last vlog I went into COS and bought a pair of trousers that did not fit well and were not actually great quality and they were like 60 quid. These are them. I have the, it's like a cream pair and then this khaki pair and they're exactly the same but they're like a tapered leg cotton trouser. They remind me of the Studio Nicholson trousers that I would love to get but could never justify the price. Um, so I'm just going to put them on for you. Here we go. So this is the cream pair. Um, I could probably maybe roll them up one more time but they are high waisted. They've got pockets which I love and they're just that kind of balloon shape round here and then they go and they're tapered in. I don't think perhaps they're the most flattering trouser. Um, I just love the shape of these because I don't know, I feel, I just feel really comfortable in this shape trouser. I probably wear something longer because I don't know if this is the most flattering jumper that I could be wearing with these trousers. But anyway, I went up from my usual size uh, to a size 12 and yeah, they are really comfortable. I can sit down in them, I can wear them for a long time. And just completely my style so I feel like um, kind of back to myself again in this kind of thing I just wanted to show them because I think they're really good value just as a trouser full stop not even kind of after having a baby okay I've just put the khaki ones on uh, but I just love the way that they fit I know they won't be to everyone's taste but I really like this kind of men's baggy trouser tailored look I feel like I had something else to show you. oh I did get a coat from Uniqlo actually which I could show you that I got in the sale, hold on. Okay, so this was completely inspired by Brittany Bathgate. I said I watched her video on coats and she had a coat very similar to this um, from Uniqlo. This is also from Uniqlo, but hers is from the Uniqlo U collection. But it's basically like a navy rain mac. And I saw this in the sale, it went down to 60 pounds and it comes just below the knee. And I just love the shape of these kind of like mac coats. 
I do need to just roll the sleeves up because they are a little bit long for me. I just really like the silhouette that this creates and I think, again, like the puffer coat, it's just like a classic winter coat that you'll always get out. It won't really go out of style. Um, so if it's still available, I'll try and link it down below, but Uniqlo always do this kind of style. Yes, that is um, a new coat. I think I'm going to... Washing in the background. I'm going to leave this vlog here now, I think. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I am going to be uploading my birth story and big baby buys at some point. I'm hoping to get that filmed at some point this week. Now that we're going back into lockdown, I have no excuse, really. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you on the next one.